Amish day. My name is Chantel Running Bear. On my Facebook, Instagram, I'm Awanchi Manimi. That is my Dakota name. That means always thinking while she's walking, or always thinking while walking woman. So I'm very proud of that name. I use it all over the place. That was um, my grandma's name. I just inherited it. And I've been making mocks for about five years now. My mom has been beading for a very long time. I learned from her, and she learned from her mom, my grandma. And the main thing we bead are moccasins. Um, the word for moccasin in Dakota is hampa. So um, I guess I started beading because my mom and my sister were, were always beading, and I finally wanted to take part in it, be part of the crew. <laughs> also, it was the uh, other side hustle for my income. <laughs> so it's, it's helpful, it's always helpful to have that, that thing you can rely on if you need extra money or whatever. You know, there's always babies being born, we always have orders, in which I'm grateful to have. So you can't learn how to make mocks this quick. But I just wanted to do a quick rundown on what, um, how time consuming it is. Um, my mom's a pro. She can finish a pair in one day if she wanted to. And I got to that point when I was hospitalized back in 2019. I was in the hospital for about a month with severe preeclampsia. So every day I was whipping on a mock. <laughs> so it was a good time and bad time, same time. <laughs> So what you're going to start with is you're going to gather all of your stuff. I mean, I have a workstation at home, so everything's near me already. But you're going to need, and this is just how we do it. There's many other ways how to make mocks. There's many different styles, like we have the woodland style. We have like the hard mock, the Apache style, and the Sioux style. You know, some are made with different materials. Some are made to have that point at the toe of the foot. Some are wraparounds, but we just do like a simple style of baby mock. So um, what I use is, it's called like fleece lining. You can find this at Joann's, it's like 15 bucks a yard. It doesn't fray, and you want to look for that because if it frays, it's just going to easily fall apart. And paper. Um, I do have, this is just a newborn pattern here. This is going to be for your tops. This is what you're going to beat on. This is your sole, little tiny feet, and this is for the tongue part. So you're going to want to trace your top part onto these ones, just like that for both. This will go on the bottom part, the fleece lining, and this will be the top. And once that's done, it's just gonna look like this. And you wanna make sure both sides line up because I made mistakes before. <laughs> or the feet were like that. <laughs> but you know, you learn along the way. You learn from your mistakes. And nothing's perfect. And there's always time and room for improvement. And once this top part, you're gonna fold it in four, vertically and then diagonally, just like that. Those are going to be markers to help you um, where you're going to cut for the tongue and where like the leg part is going to come through. And I've had this for many years. It's just like something to help me where to put the lines for each side that we do. And you want to have it at least perfect on each side. And don't make it too small because some babies feed are chubby. <laughs> so you want to make sure like it will fit most babies. And actually some babies won't, have, won't even fit newborn when they're born because a lot of them are born pretty big. <laughs> so, that is that part. Once that part is done for both sides, you're going to tack down them together so they're not moving all over the place when you cut and when you add the next part here. And that's just simple. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be beaded over anyway. As long as you get it tacked down. And then you can cut those lines that I marked, and it's gonna, you know, you can kind of see where it's gonna go around like that. So, after that's done, um, 
We put bias tape. This is actually for my nephew. This the example I had at the time. The next part is um, you're going to choose your color of bias tape to put around. Use whatever color you want. I try to stay with what the main color is that they want or what I want. <laughs> And right now, I, my next pair I'm doing is white, so I just thought I'd do one for white. And you want to stick with the, for the baby sizes, you want to do um, quarter inch for the bias tape, double fold. And once that's all sewn around, it is kind of hard to go around the sides like that because you have to fold it a certain way before you sew it. So this is actually the long part for me. So it's not so messy, so I have, sometimes I really am stuck on this part. <laughs> So once that is done, um, you can start choosing your beads, your color schemes. Um, there's all different kinds of beads you can use. Do you have like your Czech beads, your Miyuki beads, <laughs> the Japanese beads, um, your Charlotte cut beads. Um, they all range in different uh, prices. Some of these beads can be 20 something dollars a hank depending on the quality. Um, like the Cheyenne pink, a lot of people ask for, is very expensive and hard to find. Gold beads, like the real gold beads, um, they could be like 20 bucks for a hand of beads. And I don't use those real gold beads, so <laughs> I stick with the, just, you know, whatever is next in line, and this is uh, 580. It could be more depending on the store that you go to. But so most, are those are a hank, those things you're holding? Right yeah, they would equivalent to a hank. Yeah, but um, hanks of beads, like they they don't really make them anymore. The people who do get them are lucky to because they just don't want to string them up anymore. So most people are going to the tubes. And I don't use Czech beads, I use um, Japanese seed beads just because I, I just prefer them the way they're shaped and the way they look. Where do you get your beads? I get them from different um, sources. Mostly online, I go to Beaded Edge Supply. Uh, Northland Visions, um, a few other friends I have on Facebook, but I forgot their names, but I try to stick with native only to help them. Mm -hmm. And if you don't want to order online, you can go um, to Bead Check Self Care. Um, they have all kinds of beads too, but they're a little bit more spendy and they're not as big as this. So online might be the way to go. Cool. <laughs> so these are my colors. She wanted something that resembles the Mexican flag. <laughs> So I'll be doing that, and um, I try to work with at least four colors. It's easier to make designs with at least four colors. I know some people just want two or three to resemble something else. I mean, it's just harder to make designs that way. But the more colors, the better. But that's just me. <laughs> and then um, I try not to use a big um, scissors, just because like you're working with little tiny things like this, so you don't want to cut, accidentally cut anywhere, so I use a little tiny scissors. And I have like about 10 different kinds of scissors because I'm addicted to scissors. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I use one of these. I have a huge one at home, but it already has all kinds of needles and stuff on it. So just an example, I use this little tomatoes that they have. And the needles. I stitch two needles. So um, I have the long ones. You can buy these at Hobby Lobby or other bead stores will have these. And I have the small needle. This is to tack down as I go. Some people only bead with one needle and majority of time it's the small needle. <clears throat> so depending on your needle style, how you bead, the designs are gonna come out different. Because the two needle, it's better to work like this around. Um, horizontally versus the one needle style, people go up and down. So the designs are going to be different. So if you notice someone does two needle stitch and they go horizontally, don't try to make them do the one needle stitch and say, I want this, this design with it. It's just not going to work. <laughs> I mean, you can try, it's just not going to be exact. And so once you start beating, oh, she has them, okay. Um, I go around. <coughs> I go around 
first I start from here and I go all the way around first. I call this the round part. So I go around and around until like I meet a certain part, which is normally that part of the mark. And then I never draw down designs or anything. I just think about it as I go. Jeez. So <clears throat> I wish I can show you more examples because baby pairs, I can't be as creative because it's so small. But my bigger pairs, I love the designs I have on them. But I go out the rounds first. And then once that's done, I start in the middle part. That's the last part I do. And um, as I said, baby pairs, you can't really do much with them. Um, big pairs, though, I love doing them. <laughs> so once that's all beaded, you're going to uh, flip it inside out like that. And uh, you can sew it like that so that the stitches won't show. And then you can flip it like that once it's done. <coughs> that's your first step you should do. The next one, you're going to have the... Um, you're going to trace on the, your buckskin or leather, whatever you want to use. Some people use elk, moose, whatever. <clears throat> you're going to trace your sole and your tongue. And once that's traced, cut it out. You're going to attach it, start from the bottom. And then you're going to sew that piece on next. Once that is done, um, you're going to trace and cut out your sole. That will be your next step. You want to start from the back here, and you have to make sure it's perfect. If it is not perfect, your sole is going to be not right looking. It's going to make your mocks turn a different way. So that has to be perfect. If it's not, you're going to realize down the line here where you're already far, and like, I have to redo this. And it's happened a lot of times. So we have to cut it off, retry again. Once that is done, you can then add your other pieces around that area here, or sometimes I even beat all the way to the top. And then underneath, underneath like this, the leather part for the sides, you want to put your lace around so that whenever you tie it, it actually ties the part here. I notice some people make mocks and they don't add laces, which is weird to me. And some people call their mocks to us, can you add laces? I don't like working on other people's work. So I tell them you need to ask that person to add that little lace to, to your marks. So, and I highly suggest you do everything in a pencil, because if it's pen, you can't erase any of your mistakes. <clears throat> and um, I guess uh, since we've had so many people order from us, majority of the time it's not from this area. It's from all over. Um, California, the New York area, we even had Switzerland. Um, and uh, some people try to make us do other styles of mocks, and we don't do that because it's just not our style. And another thing is that we don't also beat at the bottom because to us in our community, that means like that child's ready for the next one. That's why we beat on the bottoms. They're like funeral mocks. But some people, some tribes, they believe it's like a sign of love, you know, that they beat at the bottom. Some people say it's for a ceremony. So it really depends on the people. And um, another thing is when you bead, if you're going to be using other people's designs, sometimes those are family designs and you want to ask the person first. Mm -hmm. Some people did that to me and I got a little offended because they never asked and they're selling mocks with my designs and those were my mom's designs. And also patterns are very valuable too because we've had plenty of people who wanted to buy them from us. And I will teach if I have the time, but I'm not just going to straight up give you my, this, my patterns. <laughs> I have t uh, taught a few times on my Facebook lives or give hints and whatever if I get messages. Um, but I am kind of a busy person. I try to help whenever I can. And um, I guess that is my presentation on baby mocks and I'll keep doing it until my hands can stand it. <laughs> <laughs>